The regressive left has shown their true lack of compassion yet again by lashing out at Otto Warmbier, a man who was detained in North Korea a few years ago. His crime was allegedly removing a poster from a wall that he apparently planned to sell. Considering he was given a North Korean trial, I speculate at the accuracy of these claims. They sentenced him to 15 years hard labor but released him after he apparently went brain dead. I am skeptical to say the least and I have a gut feeling that he was tortured, experimented on, or both. Either way, the story still can be tragic even if he was guilty of tearing down a poster. Was it a dumb move? Yes, and I have certainly done dumber than that myself. However, I think the more thoughtless thing was going to North Korea in the first place. That having been said, I would say that I am insulted that a citizen from my country was treated in this way by North Korea, even if he was guilty of the heinous crime of tearing down propaganda. Within a few short hours of his death, many people on the internet began to look up articles digging for anything talking about Otto Warmbier over the past few years, and found taunting and hatred leveled at him. Here's a clip of Larry Wilmore mocking him on his now-canceled television show, and this was on Comedy Central, so if he couldn't keep this show on the air on Comedy Central, it must have been horrible. No, tonight's story is about the North Korean government, which recently captured one of America's most annoying exports, a frat bro. Otto Frederick Warmbier is a University of Virginia student now being detained by North Korea. Hold, hold on one second. Um. This same man went on to Real Time with Bill Maher to confront Milo. For people on your show, These are not they're so stupid. Look at no, come on, you need, to, you need to start uh, inviting higher <laughs> IQ guests, or this I'm is going to be a disaster. These, first, yeah. of all, first of all, wait. These, these are very high. Wait, hold on, Bill. <laughs> you can go fuck yourself, all right? Yeah. You know? This was tasteless. Even considering that the guy wasn't comatose yet, I would have rather have seen him sent home and jailed here, and it would have been an opportunity to strengthen our relations with North Korea, and for North Korea to strengthen their relations with us. And said, whatever happened over there destroyed his developing mind. And as I mentioned before, this is beyond insulting to have happened to a citizen of ours that was in their care. Then on the Huffington Post, in a section specifically made for black voices, a woman called Lasha writes from March 2016. North Korea proves your white male privilege is not universal. She writes... As shocked as I am by the sentence handed down to Warmbier, I am even more shocked that a grown man, an American citizen, would not only voluntarily enter North Korea but also commit what's been described as a college-style prank. That kind of reckless gall is an unfortunate side effect of being socialized first as a white boy and then as a white man in this country. Every economic, academic, legal, and social system in this country has for more than three centuries functioned with the implicit purpose of ensuring that white men are the primary benefactors of all privilege. This kind of arrogance bred by the kind of conditioning is pathogenic, causing its host to develop a subconscious yet no less obnoxious perception that the rules do not apply to him, or at least that their application is negotiable. What a mind-blowing moment it must be to realize that after 21 years of being pedestaled by the world simply because your DNA coding produced the favorable phenotype, that such favor is not absolute. What a bummer to realize that even the State Department, with all of its influence and power, cannot assure your pardon. What a wake-up call it is to realize that your tears are met with indifference. Coming from a country filled with citizens who lambast black victims of state-sanctioned violence by telling us that if we obey the law, we wouldn't have to face the consequences. Warmbier should have listened. If he had obeyed North Korea's laws, he would be home right now. In fact, he had heeded the U.S. Department of State's strong advisement against travel to North Korea. He would be home right now. In fact, if he had heeded the U.S. Department of State's strong advisement against travel to North Korea, he would be home right now. And if Eric Garner is to blame for his own death for selling loose cigarettes, or if Sandra Bland is dead because she failed to signal when changing lanes, then Otto Warmbier is now facing a decade and a half of hard labor because he lacked both good judgment and respect for the national autonomy of a country which has made its hatred for and vendetta against America unequivocally clear. 
and while I don't blame his parents for pressuring the State Department to negotiate his release, I wonder where they were when their son was planning a trip for the DPRK. Didn't they impress upon him the hostile climate that awaited him? Did they rear him to respect law and order? Did they not teach him the importance of obeying authority? We also have this retweet from Affinity Magazine. Have you heard of them? Me either. They retweeted, Otto Warmbier was an innocent kid tortured by an evil regime. Read my interview with his North Korean roommate here in a Washington Post article. To which they replied, Watch whiteness work. He wasn't a kid or innocent. You can't go to another country and try to steal from them. Respect their laws. And then we have this Salon article. This might be America's biggest idiot frat boy. Meet the UVA student who thought he could pull a prank in North Korea. Coerced into an international crime, perhaps as a secret society prank. Great move, Otto. Nightly Show host Larry Wilmore last night dissected the case of Otto Frederick Warmbier, a University of Virginia student who had been held in North Korea since January on charges of acts of hostility against the state. Warmbier was arrested at the Pyongyang airport on January 2nd for allegedly stealing a propaganda piece from his hotel with the intent to sell it as a trophy back at the States. What were you expecting? Some spring break spot with a bunch of strip clubs? Wilmore said. Because North Korea's version of Girls Gone Wild is just middle-aged women eating full rations of oatmeal. North Korea isn't a playground for college pranks. Kim Jong-un isn't a fictional character from a Seth Rogen movie. Well, he is a character in a Seth Rogen movie, actually. And Pyongyang isn't some game you play with Coors Light and Solo Cups, Wilmore continued. It's just tough for me to have much sympathy for the guy and his crocodile tears. Wilmore noted that Warmbier may have been coerced into the stunt as part of an initiation into University of Virginia's Secretive Z Society. So you have to commit an international crime to get into the clique, Wilmore added. If your hazing includes international crimes, you've got to read the fine print on your American frat bro warranty. It says, frat bro privilege not valid in totalitarian dystopias. The regressive left will take every opportunity to lash out against their perceived oppressors. All they know is that they didn't do good enough in life because of some evil group of people that were keeping them down and preventing them from succeeding their entire life. So when a person that they decide falls into this group comes into misfortune, they jump at the chance to demonize this person based on their race. This has been repeated infinitum by the rational community, but these people are the actual racists. They are no one's defenders, no one's shield, and they are here only to empower themselves by pretending to champion the unfortunate. 